Okay. So uh, I hope to, to, okay, I have to put this in slide show, I think. So, okay. So maybe we'll talk a little bit briefly uh, about, <clears throat> I would, you know, quasi experimental research and inter interrupted time series. And I'll try my level best to give a few examples. Um, may not be exhaustive, but for curious minds who want to use this going forward, um, we can have a chance to talk uh, a little bit more. Hmm? So I wanted to say, um, <clears throat> that um, the interrupted time series analysis um, is one of the quasi experimental approaches to uh, estimating impacts or effects of programs mm, or effects of interventions. Um, most of the times when we think about estimation of the effects of interventions, the gold standard for doing that, which you all know, uh, randomized controlled trials, the, the RCTs, uh, where people are randomized to receive the treatment and the others maybe receive the placebo or they receive the standard of, of care. Uh, and then, we look at treatment effects uh, between <clears throat> the two groups. Eh? Uh, the great thing with that uh, is that RCTs are able to balance the groups. Eh? They are really, really able to balance groups um, uh, for both measured and unmeasured COVID yets, as you, as you all remember. Um, <clears throat> so they are really great every time we can do them, we, we should be able to do them. Eh? Mm -hmm. But you know, sometimes it may not be possible to conduct a clinical trial uh, for many different reasons. Eh? It could be time, you know, it, they are quite time consuming. They are also not cheap. Mm -hmm. They are not cheap. And sometimes it may even be unethical. Uh, to conduct a clinical trial. So for instance, you know, for a program that has been rolled out um, uh, for the benefit of everyone, uh, say vaccination for COVID, and you would like to see how effective the vaccination has been uh, in the real world population. Um, you know, um, say in Uganda, where we did not have to conduct a clinical trial, but the trials were conducted elsewhere already. So now we received vaccines here and started giving people. So we could not, because this was already standard of care, we could not redo the clinical trials. Um, uh, and, and this was a very fatal disease we were looking at. So if you wanted to see the impact of that, um, one of the things we could do is maybe look at our COVID rates, what were the rates of COVID before and after we vaccinated the population, but not withholding uh, vaccination for some groups, um, uh, you know, and, and then giving it to the other and looking at the differences between, between the two. Also, some exposures may be harmful. You know, there may be harmful exposures which people have gotten uh, exposed to without even their knowledge. For example, uh, uh, asbestos, exposure to asbestos. So, um, you know, uh, it, it's, it, it's, it's fatal can lead to um, various disease conditions such as uh, asbestosis. Mm? Uh, so you cannot randomize people to get it or not to get it or not to get it. But um, <clears throat> you may look at a time when say, um, if, if asbestos, uh, asbestos iron sheets were used in um, 
to roof schools or to, to provide roofings for, for people's houses, then government might then, may then pass a policy um, to ban uh, the use of asbestos iron sheets. Now, going forward, um, cases of, uh, of uh, illness arising out of asbestos exposure um, could, could be discerned or they could be monitored. Maybe we were monitoring them on a yearly basis when we had iron sheets with the asbestos. And then after the asbestos has been banned, uh, you know, we continue to monitor. And, uh, you know, even if we did not have to uh, experimentally expose some people to asbestos, we may, because by looking at the trends, the different time phases, we may be able to, to tell whether, um, whether the, the, the government ban on use of asbestos has actually had an effect on 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 on, exp, on, on illnesses arising out of exposure to asbestos. Hmm? Um, you know, have we had a change in the level? Um, also, have we had a change in uh, the rate, the rate at which uh, these um, uh, cases are detected? <clears throat> so. Those other methods that do not try to measure impact of, of through use, <clears throat> use of non RCT based me methods, but you know, tend to give you an approx a good uh, approximation of what the effect is are quite many and we call them quasi-experimental uh, methods. Um, some you have not been probably exposed to, but uh, I have taught some of these um, in the MPHM and E uh, class. <clears throat> so I think one that you are being exposed to here is going to be uh, interrupted time series analysis or segmented regression <clears throat> with ITS. But there are others. Uh, such as the uh, use of instrumental instrumental variables. Uh, there's some uh, something else we call regression discontinuity designs (RDD), um, <clears throat> and uh, you know um, uh, others such as the uh, difference in difference. Um, I think uh, over time, if the curriculum gets amended, we may have to teach this especially RD, you know, get you into you into RDD and uh, and 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 um, difference in different difference in different uh, methods. <clears throat> A propensity scores analysis is another statistical one. I don't know if you have been exposed to propensity score analysis, scores analysis. Have you? Stevie. Yes, yes, doctor. We had it in a category called data analysis. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. One. Okay. Okay. So that's good. Um, happy to hear that. So, um, so ITS is one of them. So for us, we'll just, uh, you know, focus on ITS today and see if we can make sense, sense of that. Eh? It is increasingly becoming uh, popular. Um, it's just an analysis of time series data, which really means that we are interested in an outcome uh, measured uh, over time. And this is usually an aggregate outcome. So you have, uh, I think you are dealing with LDA at, at the time, at this time, or have just finished most of the series where you have been looking at, <clears throat> at uh, um, repeated outcomes within an individual over time, <clears throat> um, within an individual over time. And the methods you have used there really lend themselves well um, to, to, to ITS. But ITS is a bit different in that 
you know, you're not majorly going to be looking at uh, individual level within, with, with, we're not going to be looking at within individual uh, analysis, <clears throat> but most of the times it's going to be aggregate data that you are looking at over time. And uh, your interest is usually not going to be an individual as such, but it is going to be uh, uh, periods of time. Mm -hmm. Periods of time. So, so periods of time are really going to be uh, of great interest. So you will be comparing um, uh, time, what the effect was before and after <clears throat> the inter invention or what we call interruption, right? You imagine that some trend is going on, then an intervention comes in and it changes some things. That intervention we say has interrupted the, has interrupted the series. Hmm? So the series are interrupted. Hmm? The series are interrupted at some point in time. So which makes it interrupted time series. Hmm? Uh, it has been extremely useful um, for assessing the impact of policy, policy, uh, policy interventions or other healthcare initiatives. In the era of COVID, uh, it has become very useful for studying the impact of COVID um, on, you know, service uh, programs. Um, impact of COVID on service programs, say, at continental care, because uh, there were some bans, hmm? there were some restrictions that came with COVID. So all of a sudden, um, women who probably could not freely access continental care or, or obstetric services, anyway, in <clears throat> or you know, one could think that with the ban on travels, <clears throat> patients could not easily access their um, uh, treatments, their ART, and one could then think, what uh, is there, could there be an, an effect? So you think, how can you actually investigate? <clears throat> how can you investigate uh, that effect? So that really, that is the major subject of, uh, of, of, of ITS. So, <clears throat> so um, you have probably heard of uh, the famous pre-post. Eh? We do a pre-post comparison, pre-post comparison to get a sense of whether something actually uh, happened, on, happened or not, right? Um, <clears throat> so um, one could say, you know, there was a monitoring this outcome over time, right? And then say, okay, if we looked at the outcome, uh, which we are monitoring now, let's say um, antenatal care or number of deliveries, uh, uh, um, you know, in health facilities. And we could start in 2000 and uh, let's say all the number of deliveries with the traditional birth attendance. And we say, okay, um, let's look. Comparing 2000 to 2015, right? To 2015, um, to 2015, one could draw a conclusion that actually, uh, let's say there was an interruption here. Some government law came in that uh, required or banned the use of TBS. And we walked through all the villages um, and, you know, the law, you know, you will be uh, taken, you know, you will be incarcerated if you uh, provide, hmm? if you provided the TBS services. So this occurs somewhere uh, before 2010, and it is the interruption you can see here represented by that solid line. And then <clears throat> government may want to say, really, was there an impact? Did this intervention cause an impact? Did it cause an impact on uh, birth attendance, right? 
uh, deliveries uh, among the parents. So <laughs> it is possible uh, for, for some of us who, uh, you know, are statistical, we say, okay, let us look at, you know, over time, let's look at the mean number of deliveries uh, uh, through TBS before 2008, for instance, when the, the law was passed. And then compare that with the mean number after the intervention, say, going up to, to 2015. And uh, so for argument's sake, let's say the mean here was 83. Uh, 83, and the mean after was what? 43, right? The mean after was 43, okay? So is it, can we then say, because we see this difference, and statistically we can test it, we can do a very good t-test and, uh, and, and make a good uh, scientific conclusion, and you know, and the government will be very happy that the policy it pass has really, really had an, an effect on, on birth, uh, ten, you know, birth attendance by TBS. But, um, you know, what, you know, what would you think about uh, that, uh, that conclusion? How sound would such a conclusion be? Hello, somebody talk to me. Um, I think I think that conclusion would not be would not be giving us a picture of the trend before, mm. which we ex which which trend we would have thought uh, to continue to based on to to analyze the difference in the trend after compared to what we expected the pre-trend to continue, what are we observing now? So that difference in the trends, it does not give us a difference in trends. Okay, but thank you very much, Joseph. Sorry, I forgot to introduce Josephine. Um, so Josephine is not really part of this class per se, but she is a student um, um, in the MPH class who is also using ITSA for her analysis. So I invited her to, to be part of today's class just to, we don't teach ITSA in MPH. So I just invited her to, 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 to just listen in uh, today. But let me hear a bit more and thank you, Josephine. Let me hear a bit more from Motevi. Hmm? your thoughts about this conclusion. Because what's wrong with us doing the t-test pre and post? Hmm? We know when the intervention was passed and then we know after. So what would be the problem with that? In a very simple um, uh, language. By the way, where's Rogers? Interesting, Rogers is not here. Hmm? Nixon. Nixon, yes, you, are, you are very good at thinking about these things. You think about that a little bit. Um, you can build on to what Josephine just, the comment Josephine just made. Doctor, I'm failing to come to a conclusion. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, let, yeah. Um, you look at that picture really, and 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 where's where's uh, ah yeah, I was looking for Teresa. <laughs> Teresa. Incidentally, we are missing many people. Hmm? So would you please uh, come come again on the on, on the explanation of ask the question so that maybe people need to comprehend it well. No, I'm, I'm actually you're looking at this trend. I hope you can see what I'm sharing. 
the trend in birth the, the deliveries by TBS, you know, kept coming down from 2000 to 2015. You know, but still in by say 2008, the government was concerned and it passed a policy of no use of TBS, right? No use of TBS, that was the policy. So <clears throat> in 20, say 2016, the government wanted to see since we passed the policy, what has been uh, the, the mean number of, of deliveries through TBS? And they discovered they're about 43. And when they compared before, they had about 83. Hmm? So 43 compared to 83. Then they say, you know, ah, this has reduced this by almost half. They do a t-test and say, yes, the government program has had a big impact. Uh -huh. So now, what would you say about that conclusion? Uh, doctor. Yes. This is Edrisa Mwanga. Yes, Edrisa. But really, when I look at this graph, mm -hmm. does the policy really have any impact? Because the, the, the drop was, uh, was already, the, the, the trend was dropping already. Uh, do you think if, if they hadn't put there that policy, they, they would have seen an upward trend at some point? For me, I don't think that policy is, is good enough to make our conclusion about the outcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Edrisa. You have made a very, very important point. Eh? How can the policy be credited for having reduced number of deliveries through TBS? When in actual fact, we already saw that this trend was coming down anyway, right? It was already coming down and every year it was coming down by the same, 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 same amount. Hmm? Same, same. So that the, 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 the government policy came in with this very solid blue line, uh, solid line here. If at least we had observed uh, this trend, instead of moving the way it moved um, and came down to 20 by 2016, if indeed it had changed the course and Re and by 2012, it came down to 20. So you would have seen a sharp, you know, maybe a sharp drop. And by 2020, 2013, we had reached 20. Hmm? So the point here is, uh, is the failure to control for pre-interruption trend. Hmm? So the, if we run the analysis on this, hmm? Um, where we are going to control for the pre-interaction trend, right? We will not say difference because the trend before and after is just going to be the same. Hmm? Is that clear to everyone? Yes. Hmm? yes. yes. Okay, wonderful. So the other big problem that arises is what you have been dealing with in the LDA, which is the autocorrelation. Am I right to say you have already dealt with that? Hello? I don't remember that class yet in LDA. In LDA? You haven't done autocorrelation. Maybe I missed the class, but I don't remember it. Oh, maybe you maybe you know it by some other name. Hmm? Is it so, autoregressive so, correlation? Yeah, yeah. That's that's what I'm talking about, right? Okay. Hmm? Yeah. You may call it the autoregressive correlation. That's what you have been dealing with, eh? and you are experts at checking for auto autocorrelation. So this is not the biggest subject of this class. This is just to introduce concepts of 
uh, uh, time series analysis. Hmm? So the other thing, the other problem you run into is that there is likely to be autocorrelation. Hmm? And, and, and how would that be, uh, how we would do We see auto, uh, no, no, not not how would we test for it, but why would there be? Why would we expect some autocorrelation? Talema. Uh, yes, doctor. Why would we? Why would we expect uh, autocorrelation? What would give rise to autocorrelation here? Um, uh, uh, maybe I would think that uh, since uh, the data we had tried a characteristic of uh, time series, we would expect that the occurrence of uh, an outcome, for example, uh, if we would consider that example that you have just given, that the mean in 2000, maybe 2001, and the value we have attained the mean value of 2000, 2002, we might say that um, uh, what leads to the number of 2000, 2001 could be having some correlation with the number in 2000, and therefore would have to test that uh, to check for autocorrelation since the data we are dealing with has element of time series. It, occur, it occurs after some time that is a bit consistent. That would be my thought. So, um, of course, um, you, you may find that actually the number of um, deliveries through TBS um, in a particular year at least, uh, at least, you know, co highly correlated with what the number was in the previous year. Hmm? So that is your lag one, lag one of correlation. Would you speak in your mic? You, you are too low. Oh, sorry. Uh, apologies. You hear me better? Now better. Okay, so you would expect that they, if you, had uh, the measurement of uh, a summary measurement. Um, for instance, you let's say you had the uh, this say these were monthly measurements of say uh, deliveries deliveries within a month, um, January going up to December, eh? going up to December, and you are tracking those over time. Eh? It is possible that the number of deliveries you observe say in january of 2022 might be actually not exactly the same but might be in a way highly correlated with the, the deliveries in january of 20 21. So that is a 12 month gap. Eh? So it might be something to do with that month. It might be having something to do with the seasons. But so that is a 12 month, 12 month autocorrelation, hmm? a, a, a lag. So you have a, a, a 12 month lag, hmm? yeah, which you will use it new, uh, 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 you know. Um, hmm? So the control for that, because serial measurements uh, might be correlated with the measurements, maybe right before them, that's lag one, or, or there may be second order correlations, lag two. Hmm? <clears throat> Um, so this is something, of course, you have done uh, a lot uh, in your previous classes, eh? but you may, may be doing it for within individual comparisons. Now, the, 
ITSA, Interrupted Time Series Analysis, um, concerns itself with the two things, right? One, if there has been an interruption, let's say by the policy, by the policy, do we see a change in the level? What would call an immediate effect? Hmm? Do we see an immediate effect? So considering that ban, hmm, and in 2008, did we see an immediate effect? Would we say, say there's an immediate effect dropping us from the level that was uh, high at 50 and dropping us to something like 35? That is a level change. Do we see a change in level? The second thing that ITSA will concern itself with is a change in slope, right? There could be an immediate drop and then a change in the slope after that. Hmm? Uh, a change in the slope compared to the previous. So we could have a situation where we have both that in the slope. And we will see an example. Is that clear? Joanne, is that clear? Yes. Joanne Anantes, is that clear? Rogers, your hand is up. What's going on? You came late. <clears throat> I, am, I am very sorry for joining a little late. I hope you don't take us I'm back. Inquiring... I'm on. No, no, no. I am <laughs> Network. Network is this one. to the level change and uh, sustain immediate effect and sustained effect assuming i'm looking at uh, a, an example of uh, of uh, uh, art uptake or insect among the state identifications we've had uh, quite a number of changes in the guidelines over the years so when we talk of a level immediate change i'm trying to think of now like uh, they had uh, they had instituted the uh, pharmacies to start giving out the RRT. Are we looking at, I'm trying to compare if that could, uh, be, could be accounted for with this uh, interrupted time series analysis. If you have to look at the uptake or the errors the RRT over time, I'm trying to look for an example in my mind that could, uh, I could search for, for these two effects. So there, there are lots of examples that you can think about, but maybe let's go on and just see what we have eh? and then see uh, whether you, you'll have, uh, your questions will be answered as we go. Eh? So there's what we call single series, single series eh? ITS analysis. And the, to tell you the truth, this is the commonest um, uh, ITS analysis that we do. Single series ITS eh? is uh, really the commonest analysis that we do. Um, of course, we do others um, which are not single. So single time series eh? uh, for some outcome variable could be, for instance, we are looking at annual rates of influenza or you could call this okay, you're again, malaria. You sound, you're you're sound, you are too late again. Oh, I'm still far. Am I back? Yeah, you're not back. Sorry, it is my mic that uh, I keep moving. I don't know why I move it. I keep moving it. Okay. So um, you could say, let's look at annual rates of influenza. Let me look at annual rates of malaria. Let me look at the uh, monthly monthly rates of of of, of COVID and some and those data are there by the way. If you and you know you can even download you can even go download uh, uh, COVID reported the 
COVID reported what? Uh, COVID rates. Eh? Um, and and that, that, that will be also very useful data by country. And you can look at it over time and, and, and it could make, uh, it could be very good for, 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 for ITS. I, I, I wish I, I actually did that. <clears throat> so <clears throat> it could be, and this data could be, data it could be, you know, it could be counts of data. You know, you may just be dealing with the proportions, a proportion over time. You could just be doing dealing with any, with the, any summary kind of data, hmm? any summary data. So you measure it before and after some intervention. Okay. So um, an example could be, uh, say, implementing a new hand hygiene regimen. Uh, or could be changing a policy for use of chemotherapy. Um, <clears throat> and, and so many, you, uh, I think in your minds, you can think of lots and lots of examples, um, um, which are real life, real life examples, real life. And then you will say, oh, after the intervention has been, has there been a change in level and all slope following the intervention? Eh? So <clears throat> just quickly jumping into um, uh, the detail of the IATS methodology itself. Eh? So, um, so these are regression-based techniques. So regression is not foreign to anyone in this class. Um, they are only dummy variables. The issue is we get to add lots of dummy variables uh, for us to run uh, this ITS. Eh? Um, you know, as of course, you know, our usual techniques and uh, it just ex exemplified here with the, uh, a review of our standard linear regression, uh, where you have the, the, the intercept uh, coefficient beta, um, and then your independent variable, uh, which now is the intervention. And of course, as usual, you have residuals. Um, now, single interrupted time series, um, uh, um, you know, <clears throat> is really based on segmented linear regression. Mm? As I said, it is a segmented linear regression. Mm? <clears throat> you know, it's just segmented. So um, you can look, we can look at the outcome of interest. We look at the outcome of interest as a function of full as a function of uh, an intercept. And then we have, you know, we, we, we have an indicator for time. Uh, so we have a, a variable for time, actual time, eh? actual time, uh, you know, uh, month one, two, three, four, five, six, blah, 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 go on and on, or years. So it could be years, it could be months, it could be weeks, it could be anything. And we have a coefficient for it. Um, and then we have x. Um, we, we have it's also a function of x, and x here represents our intervention. Mm -hmm. Now, here I need you to pay a lot of attention. X then represents our intervention. Unlike where you're just saying uh, in your individual analysis, we are saying somebody received. Uh, was given the drug X, another person was not given drug X, right? Drug X is given, is drug X not given. The X here, the X here, and I, as I told you, we're not individual. The X here represents a phase. It is an indicator variable for time. Time will be four and the time after the intervention. So if we are talking of a time when, you know, restrictions for COVID were imposed in 2020 March, if our ITS goes up to 2020 March, then our X is going to be, and we're interested in our impact, X is going to be period before 2020, and then which would be zero indicator zero and period after 
our intervention and that the indicator will be one in that case. So our X is zero one here, but it's actually referring to periods. Uh, beta three AXT is an interaction, hmm? is an interaction term between X and T, right? An interaction term between X and T. Somebody talk to me what that interaction term would do, what the purpose of that interaction term uh, would be. What would be the purpose of that interaction term? Mm -hmm. Somebody talk to me. Yes, doctor. Mm. Uh, can I give it a try? This is Taremo. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think that uh, um, would it be uh, uh, the, 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 the difference of so differences when we are looking at the rate of change uh, of our outcomes, the rates over time. That's what I would think of how that interaction term helps us in this case. So the difference in? In the rate of change of our outcome over time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe, maybe, uh, Doctor. Hello. Was that Telemo? Hello, do you hear me? Oh, doctor, did I lose you again? Doctor, Telemo had finished. Yes, 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 doctor. Okay, I think it was yeah. Telemo who said that that interaction, that interaction XT hello. is really trying to look at, hello? Again, you can't hear me. Oh my God. Uh, doctor, People, do you here. hear me? Oh, wonderful. Yes, doctor. So we can't hear you. So that interaction XT is talking about trying to look at the rate. Uh, it's trying to look at the, you can't, you can't hear me? No, we are hearing you. You can't hear me, Loud and clear. Okay, I thought someone okay. said we can't hear you. Okay, let's just concentrate now and move on. So that XT is really looking at uh, and uh, at the time after the interaction, right? So therefore, the coefficient that goes with that, uh, the, the, the if we con concern ourselves, let's go back slow with the coefficients, the actual coefficients, and we'll quickly, quickly look at them. Eh? Uh, let's start with alpha being, uh, be, be, being you know, the, the intercept. Um, what would you say, Stephen, <clears throat> alpha would represent? Oh, thank you so much, Doctor. Uh, uh, maybe alpha will be a, a value of uh, what's being observed without uh, the, <clears throat> the inclusion of uh, this other maybe other variables we are looking at and without uh, maybe at, can I say at best like or at the start of the 
of the study, I would say. Okay, so in terms of the time series, if we were look, uh, monitoring this number of births from uh, the, the start, uh, say in 2000, in, in 1990, hmm? that's where we started. So interpret it in terms of 1990. Yeah, um, uh, uh, alpha would be the number of uh, uh, births. Uh, or life path or whichever at, 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 in the year 1990 without maybe the uh, a, a usual tie, but something else. But this will be now the baseline value. Okay, so we would agree that, you know, this is really, this is the your, your baseline number of uh, deliveries as uh, Stephen says. Yeah, so as uh, Stephen says, we can say that is your baseline number of deliveries at the start of the series. Hmm? At the start of the series, that is our um, uh, our number. Now, if we, how would we then interpret beta one? Beta one, uh, which now relates our outcome to to time. Let me. Ibrahim, beta one, coefficient beta one. So if I can go again and, and just say, you know, we have, um, we have, um, and we are following this series, hmm? number of, number of deliveries over time we moved started from 1990 and just and we are monitoring them on a yearly basis every year we take a summary of number of deliveries so then we hit uh, 2000 we hit the year 2000 there is an intervention in 2000 uh, that is the intervention x and then we continue to monitor the deliveries after 2000 and uh, after 2000, okay? So now we would ask ourselves, what is this coefficient beta one? Okay, Rogers, what is beta one? Um. I think I think beta one would be the, the, the rate of change in the number of deliveries mm -hmm. over the time period. Mm -hmm. I think. Okay. I think that is the partially correct. Yeah, eh? try. But can be improved. Eh? Can be improved. Edrisa. You're asking for T. B B one. Yeah, beta one. Beta, beta one. one is our mm -hmm. Uh, leads to a unit change in is 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 is, is, a, is a, a change in y or, or when there is a, a, a change in t and controlling for x okay i think we want to be as explicit as possible remember there was an intervention that started at, uh, uh, in 2000, and that intervention is represented by the indicator X. Um, and we have seen, you have seen that basic model of a single ITS has, a, you know, an interaction term between X and T, meaning it, you know, it wants to see the difference in, 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 in trends. Huh? Different difference in trends after the intervention uh, started or in the period after the intervention. But then we ask ourselves, hmm? so there's a difference in change, but so what is the beta one here? I think, I think beta one. Beta Josephine. one yes. Josephine. Think, yes, sir. Because you are a guest here, I'm not going to uh, uh, ask you questions. And I know that you know a little bit more. Um, um, I'm not going to ask questions. I'm not going to even uh, ask you to respond. 
so okay. my friends here are, are, learn, are learning this for the first time okay. let's see how they do yes doctor steven mm. uh, uh, um, oh okay steven go on all right doctor thank you i would say beta one is the is the average uh change in uh back uh, after some after time after me like change in time to like after maybe say from maybe moving from 1990 up to some time. Okay, I think you're partially correct, but there is a, something about that time that is very, very important for ITS here. Something about that time. Hmm? Um, and, and remember there's that interaction XT. Mm. There is that interaction next T. It, it has to tell you something. Doctor, let me try. Nixon. Yes, I I would think it is um better one is the expected number of deliveries for for change in time before and after the intervention. Uh, say it again, Nixon. It's, a, it's, an, it's the expected yeah, it's an, it's the expected number of deliveries or, or change in time intervention was not yet there to when the intervention was implemented. But when you say that when you say that uh, beta one has no X in it. So how can you talk about an intervention when there is no X in it? Yeah. Hmm? Steve, you want to try again? I see your hand is still up. I, oh, I think uh, I just left it by mistake, but I can try again. Is the, uh, let, let me look for you. No, no, no but let me, no, let, no, 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 no. Let me look for Joanne here. Where is Joanne? Yeah, Joanne is still here. Joanne, I told you I would ask you many questions. Sorry. Yes, doctor. Yes, uh, can you interpret beta one? Let, let's move quickly with this one, please. Beta one. Is the difference in the trend after the intervention with the before time? You you faded away before you completed. I think. For me, I think it's or just is, the rate it's of change, channel. like the the rate of change in the intervention before and after. So it is the rate of change, yes. Do, do does everyone else hear me or, or is it me or is it uh, uh, Joanne's network? It, 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 it can hear you. Where is Kevin? Jessica, is she on this call? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, she's here. Jessica Bironi. Please, you must get this data one, seriously. <clears throat> Jessica Bironji. Uh, I'm not sure, I pass. But uh, let me ask people in your Doctor. multiple linear, yeah, yeah, yes? Let me yes, ask, uh, before you come in, in your multiple linear regression, have you dealt with the interaction terms? Yes, we did. Yes. yes, yes, we did. Okay, then this should be easy. Uh, um, this should be very easy than you have. Um, Nakasuja. Proskovia Nakasuja. Uh, could it be a change in, could it be the slope? Uh huh. It um, yeah, the slope. 
of change in our outcome? You can't say slope of change. The change in itself is a slope. Mm -hmm. Change, change really. Change per some unit time is what slope is. Mm -hmm. So now go on. It is the uh, change. It is the rate of change of our outcome with changes in time. Okay. If so, God help me, I get someone who can do this with the realizing there's an interaction term here. Can I try? Yes, please, try Fina. Uh, it's the it's the slope and of the outcome until the introduction of the intervention. So, say it again. Say it again, even clearer. You are there. Say it clearer. It's the slope of the outcome variable until the introduction of the intervention. So you are saying this is the change in the outcome before the intervention, right? Yes. And an easy way to think about this is to reduce everything else to zero. If you have this kind of model, if you can reduce everything else if you can reduce your x to zero so that that is cut out, x would mean no intervention, right? And so clearly, beta one is the change hmm, or is the slope of this outcome, uh, the change in the outcome uh, by, by unit time before the intervention started. So that is when x is equal to zero. If you reduce x to zero, so meaning you cut out all these other terms, beta two, beta three, they are all cut out. Then what you are left with is uh, alpha plus beta one T, right? And so beta one is yes, a change in this outcome, but in the period before the intervention, when X is equal to zero. Is that clear to everyone? Yes, doctor. Yes, it is. Yeah. So, yeah. So, if now that is well understood, and thank you uh, very much, um, you know, for rescuing us, eh? um, uh, Trifina. So, <clears throat> then what is beta two? If we now go to beta two, what then is beta two? Huh? Jessica, we don't jump back to you. Yes, Kabirundi. Hey, this guy is not here. Teresa. Teresa. Yes, doctor. Yes, Teresa. Yes, tell me, talk to me about that. Beta two. So Trifina has rescued us, so please rescue us on beta two. Should be the easiest. Hello. Yes, doctor, I'm trying to write it down uh, compositely so I can say what I have. Okay. Okay, Trifina, I see your hand, but let, uh, let's try Teresa here. Stephen, I also see your hand, but I want to hear Teresa. X is a cool. very, very, beta two is a very important variable. Um, maybe I can say it's the average value of y for every unit change in x 
Yeah, I. Oh, if passing, yeah. Oh, where is yeah? Where is yeah? That yeah time. is time. Time is the year, but now we are at beta beta one. We are looking at beta two. And you know what X is? Hmm? You remember what X is? Is an indicator for time occurring before or after the intervention? So could so it be two measures of? Could it be the average change in uh, the value of Y for every unit change? of every unit increase in our independence variable X before the interruption or before the intervention. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Before the interruption, after the interruption. So not quite there, not quite there. Hmm? So we have seen beta one being docking at the slope before the intervention. Okay, that's okay now. Beta two talks about something else. Uh, you know, <clears throat> Rogers. Yes, doctor. Please say this. You guys are statisticians. So let's say this. Let's quickly mention this. I, I, I think beta two uh, is the is the difference between uh, the mean values of uh, the out, our outcome variable uh, at the time when we have introduced the intervention for every adjust, for every unit change in x. But what do you mean by for every unit change in X, Rogers? I know that we have taught the interpretation, okay, unit this. What do you really mean by unit change in X? Because oh. you are going to have to interpret this to the to, to Dr. Ruther Cheng. Hmm? Um, so I want you to really say it to Dr. Ruther Cheng. Then I then I would say that uh, this is uh, the, the difference in the outcome variable uh, from the time when uh, we have introduced the intervention to the time when it was not comparing the time before and after introducing the intervention. Well, okay, uh, that's that's uh, thank you very much, Rogers. That uh, uh, gets uh, there. So I have mentioned it to you that ITS looks at two things. Change in level, that's an immediate change. Change in level, right? And the change in slope, change in slope, right? So the beta one, when we just mentioned the beta one, we haven't mentioned the change in slope yet. We, it is just the slope. Hmm? Before the intervention, it is our no uh, modus operandi, no problem. We are just mentioning that. But when we start a coefficient for X, now we get into the first thing that ITS does, a change in level hmm? of the outcome. That is an immediate change. They meet that immediate change in the level of the outcome right uh, comparing the period before and after the intervention it could be an increase an immediate increase in that outcome or a drop in the other outcome it could be an increase in number of deliveries and decrease in number of deliveries it could be an you know uh, <clears throat> something like that so so that is very very important that's very very important okay if we then go to beta 3 Right, then uh, what are we saying with beta three? Ibrahim is very quiet today. Hmm? Ibrahim, you are quiet. Ibrahim? Ibrahim, I think he just decided to record and walk away. 
<clears throat> okay. Uh, now we've come to beta three. Yes, sir. Uh, now talk about beta three. Now our beta three will be a change in this slope after an intervention. Okay. Now beta three goes to the second use by TS. Beta two goes to the level. There is there a change in level of the outcome? Uh, you know, immediately after the inter was in place. Whereas now beta three examining whether the trend also changed, whether the trend also going back to that, right? So going back to that, what is the, in this example, this graph, what would you say is alpha? Trafina, what is alpha in this example? In this, yeah, on this plot. What's an estimate of alpha? Just to remind you where, I think if we get this, then we're fine. We'll just go quick. What is alpha? And we have to end by midday. So we have to move quick. Alpha. If you are you still with us? Alpha is 50. This case is, is 50, right? Hmm? So, so if I could do ask, uh, yeah. Uh, so if I can get to Proscovia, what do you estimate of, of beta one? Hmm? What's your estimate of beta one when you look at this uh, plot? Hello? Beta one is uh, it is fifty minus. It could be fifty minus fifteen, because it's the difference. Beta one. So really, really, really. What's beta one? What's your spent of beta one, Rogers? I could remind you and go. Um, What's your estimate of beta one? I think that our it's just an estimate. Yeah, I think our estimate is uh, is uh, is uh, thirty. Uh, the difference between now statisticians. Uh, the this between... is the solid. No, Rogers, you stop. This is the solid vertical. This is the start of the intervention. So, hmm? so, 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 Stephen, what is your estimate of beta one in this plot? If you really understood what Trefina said about beta one. Yes, Doctor, uh, can I try? I, I, I asked Stephen. Doctor, um... <clears throat> It will be, uh, I think I say that it will be uh, the value of, of why when before the intervention, and so that will be. Ah, 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 ah. Is that, did I pick it wrong? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm not asking for alpha. I'm not asking for no, alpha. Uh, alpha. I'm asking for B. So I have beta. Okay. I was trying to answer. What is the estimate of beta one? Will be certified. Mm. I can say certified. Ah, people. Try Fina. You 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 told us about beta one. What is your estimate of beta one in this example? Come on, then. What is your estimate of beta one in this plot you're looking at? 
I have said this vertical line represents when the intervention started. So what's your estimate of beta one in this plot? It's still 50 because it's still, it's constant throughout before the intervention. Well, what's your estimate? Your alpha is 50 and your beta one is 50. Yes. So let's see Trifina. Tell us what beta one is again, conceptually, what you told us before. The change in the outcome before the intervention when X is zero. The change, the change, change per unit time, right? Yes. Hmm? Change hmm. per unit time. The change per unit time, which is a slope, right? Yes. Beta one is a slope, don't we agree? Hmm. So what is beta one? Because if you say it's change per unit time, then it is a slope. The change per unit yeah. time zero. for the intervention. So what is the what is what is it, Stripin? Zero. Yeah. People. So really when you look at this flat graph, it tells you beta one should be equal to zero here. That's what you expect. Your alpha is 50. And then your beta one is definitely zero. Your beta one <clears throat> is definitely zero. Okay, so thank you. So let's go to, to beta two. So who can make a guess of the estimate of beta two here? Just a guess, just an estimate. So just to say, just to say, um, just okay. for purposes of being clear, um, the, 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 the actual trend is what you see in solid black here, solid black. So this is it here, uh, the, 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 the graph below. So it was there, now it came down here and then started trending downwards. So what is the beta two as an estimate? We haven't done any you know, regression, so we're just saying what is the estimate? Fifteen. Sorry? Fifteen. Hello. Hello. Yeah, who is talking? Steven. Hmm? Steven. Yeah, so Steven, so the estimate can be about 15. Eh? Uh, it's a change in level, a level change after the, 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 the intervention, change in the number of deliveries after implementation of the intervention. This is immediate change. And then now that we go um, to, to, to something else, hmm? we go to then to beta three. Hmm? We then go to beta three in this case. So beta three, uh, which we have already uh, defined. Hmm? Go to beta three, <clears throat> uh, um, uh, which we have already defined. Hmm? And uh, we do not know for sure, it may be very difficult for us to estimate that. Uh, but yes, so we see, we see a quick downward, downward trend. The estimate of the slope was zero before. Now, the estimate of the slope after the intervention, would one say it is zero? Certainly not. Uh, so the, the slope quickly changed, right? So there is both a level change by coming down here, but also the trend changed. So beta three will really speak change in the slope. Okay, so I'll leave that. And so, so if you looked at the layout of the data, organization of the data, is you're going to have the year there and you're seeing the rate that we are talking about and T is your time uh, moving from one up to 15. And then you have your X's here. 
okay? Your X is the intervention, the zero, zero, zeros, these ones, this was before the intervention, right? So you can see that the intervention started in 2009, going down. So everything else before the intervention would be, before 2008 is zero for X. And then we have now X, uh, of course, X, X, uh, the, the X, uh, XT, which is that interaction between X uh, and, the, and the T to, 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 to give us a sense of the slope. So um, let's see. So single ITS, an example, before we are caught by time. Sing, um, so we say, okay, what do these results tell us? Okay, uh, for instance, there's a town A which kept records of population smoking at least once a day, right? Then in 2008, there is a, a, a smoking tax. So this is what now causes the interruption. There's a smoking tax in 2008. So you can look at data before and after smoking tax eh, and try to analyze it. Eh? And so you can see, uh -huh, before 2008, you have the plot in 2008, okay? And then after that, we can still see, uh, uh, we see the plot again. And then we have the results. We have the, the results of, of that. Eh? Uh, we have the results of that. Um, 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 in the table below. So we run the model and the, uh, beta one with one, beta two, beta three, uh, both there. The beta ones, beta twos and beta three. So, okay, with what we don't see is our alpha or beta naught. We can even, we, we may guess, but we may be wrong. Hmm? We may just guess it, but we may be wrong. Hmm? But if we just hazard a, a, a guess anyway, uh, try to figure out what would the, the, the alpha be, just as a guess, and you don't have to be correct. But all of us looking at the graph may guess what it could be around. Try Fina. Mm, could be 32. Yeah, a guess. So your guess might be about 32, and that's fine, right? This is the uh, this is the you know the 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 the, the percentage that smoked hmm? that smoked at least a, a day uh, before the intervention. Okay, we take it as that, and then we get into beta one now. So okay, so do we have? Uh, the, the the results for beta one here. Hmm? Mm -hmm. So Proskovia here, can you see the results for beta one? Uh, beta one could be. What is the estimate of beta one? Uh, it could be like like four. Why four? Um, because I'm getting the difference out of change of our outcome before the intervention. So uh, the last point here could be like at 28, and then the starting value for our outcome could be like 32. So I got the difference. Yeah, but why are you sweating <laughs> that? Um, um, um... The estimate for beta one is right in the table. Why don't you just look at it? It is negative. It is 0 0.277. So what does, how would you just interpret it to Dr. Ruth Cheng? Uh, 0.277 would be the uh, it would be the difference in our outcome before the intro before the intro before the intervention the, the difference in what now uh Proskovi. remember you people you are going to be speaking with the policy makers you know and you're really trying to explain things to them you have to be uh, 
as lay as possible, just say it in English uh, so that someone just gets it. Hmm? Please don't go out there and, 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 and act like we did not teach. Hmm? That would be very bad. Hmm? Just say it plainly. We have agreed and we're not going to go back. That bitter one is a slope, right? Is the slope before the intervention, right? In the period before the intervention. So then, Proskovia, why don't you just say it clearly? These are, you know, here we are modeling percentages. So these are percentages. Hmm? Your estimates are percentages, really. people okay wow Edrisa yes sir go on I'll try this we have to move quickly because we have only 30 minutes left and is a drop of 27%. So it's actually, they're modeling plain percentages. So uh, uh, it, it's not proportions, but that's actually percentages there. there. If you can see percent population smoking. So, <clears throat> so what you see there are real percents. So go on. Yeah, before the, the, the intervention, uh, is a, a drop of 28%. No, it's, it is zero, it's about 0 0.3%. It's not 28%. Uh, because when you look at the graph, really, do you even see a 28% drop? Okay, yeah. So 0 0.3. Mm -hmm. 0 0.3%. What? In, this is a slope. Yeah, um, in the, in the, in the, yeah, the slope shows that that slope. But uh, interpret this slope clearly for the minister, please. The, the let's say this was smoking. In, in other words, it was eating candy, but didn't want to say eating candy. So, so, so the percentage who smoked did what? Okay, let me send Rogers, his hand is up. Rogers, say it clearly and nicely to the minister, you know, and say this guy, hey, this guy went to Makerere and he did statistics <laughs> while there. Hmm? You know, uh, the, the you know, uh, the, the Mr. Go ahead. No, I'm asking you, Rogers. Hey, I would say that uh, before the intervention, uh, the the proposed the percentage of citizens that have been that are smoking has been dropping from the year to, uh, since the year 2018. I mean, since the year 2000, has been dropping at a rate of. Uh, I mean, by 0.3%. By 0.3% per what? Because then that's with, then that is the slope. The slope must have a figure and per something or every something. It, the, before, before, before the intervention, the proportion of citizens that have been smoking has dropped by uh, by 0.3% per, per year since 2000. Yeah, so before the intervention, uh, the, the, the percentage that dropped actually 
um, uh, was dropping, hmm? right? This was 0.3 percent per year. So every year there was a 0.3 percent drop. Every year there was a 0.3 percent drop. So it's dropping by 0.3 percent per year before the intervention. Okay. Uh huh. So then you would go to beta two. Hmm? Now the beta two. Okay. And now you want to take to tell the minister smoking. They want to say, tell us what happened after our uh, smoking tax. So you see, you go to beta two. Huh? You remember beta two x. And so I'm um, back to Trifina for you to interpret. We could say all the fancy things in this class and uh, say all the fancy jargon, but if you can't interpret what you're seeing, uh, then we have no work. Hmm? We can run all the, all the commands in this world, but if we can't interpret what the output is, then we're in trouble. Okay, try Fina. Sorry, try Fina, I'm asking you a lot. Uh, every year there's, there's a the different... Two now. Pardon? The two. Every year there was a 3.43 job in the number of citizens eating candy. But why are you saying every year? Why are you saying every year? We have already talked about a slope in beta one. Now beta two x. Hmm? We are at that term beta two x, and now we are simply interpreting the coefficient beta two. And we say yeah, that the uh, uh, ITS right. does two things. It talks about yes. Go ahead, Stephen. Uh, my Stephen, say would, go on. My say would be uh, uh, the the proportion of people smoking since 2000 kept reducing, I uh, mean reduced by 7.4 after the inclusion of the tax. Where do you get 7.4? I mean, sorry, 3.4, sorry, oh, 3.4. Re reduced by the proportion that, uh, the, the percentage that smoked, reduced by 3.4. Hmm? Yes. Um, you know, uh, after the intervention. And that is a level change. That is now the first use of ITS is done. Hmm? First use of ITS is done. It's saying there was a level change. And indeed, when you look at the picture, you see a level change. You see that reduction from somewhere up there to, you know, somewhere down there. So you see, a sudden uh, a, a drop uh, in the um, in the intervention uh, post what <clears throat> uh, uh, post uh, post post change right so now beta three what is beta three. Beta three, beta three, beta three. Someone bold just talk about uh, beta three. Rogers, is this a, a hand up? Uh, yes, I wanted to try beta three. Okay. But, um, okay, well, I would it's your time. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The, <clears throat> after introducing the intervention about smoking, uh, the the proportion of uh, of uh, people of smokers has reduced by uh, by uh, zero point three percent for every, I mean, per year since the introduction of the intervention. The proportion of say smokers reduced by zero point three percent per year hmm? after is that a correct statement? Reduced by zero point three percent per year. Hmm? I can call it the rate of uh, the rate of uh, the rate of smoking reduced by point three percent per year since the introduction of the 
the intervention. Say that again. The, the, say that again. The rate. The rate. The rate of small of smoking reduced by 0.3 percent per year since the introduction of the intervention. Okay, so it is the rate that changed, right? It is the rate which changed. The rate, we knew a rate before, but now this, the rate, the rate, uh, the rate uh, did something. You were, when you say the rate reduced by uh, 0.3% per year, well, I don't know if it's uh, very, very clear. Hmm? Because what it seems to show is, is this is now the, 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 the slope is now more accelerated. So the drop is now more accelerated, right? Hmm? Hmm? So the reduction, the reduction in smokers, the reduction, this might be, but the reduction, the reduction even increased by 0 0.3 per year. Mm -hmm. Remember there was already a reduction of, of about 0 0.3 per year, but that reduction even increased by 0.3% per year. Do you, you get it? Already there was a reduction of 0 0.2 uh, or 0 0.3 before the intervention. But when the intervention, after the intervention was increased, that reduction even increased by 0.3% 0 0 per year. Hmm? Does it make sense to you? So this indicates, the, this indicates an accelerated reduction. Excuse right? me, doctor. Now, who is asking? You are leaving me behind, please. Okay, where did I leave you? I thought the, the signs play a role, whether it's an increase or a decrease. That's why so, I said the reduction. The, the, the reduction is there. Hmm? So it is the reduction that is even increasing. So meaning this is increasing more, the reduction. We are seeing even further reduction. Hmm? So this is the, an, you know, um, uh, a change in the rate. Hmm? So um, if, if you were really to look at this, you are saying the, there is even an accelerated reduction, right? The reduction even, even, even increased by 0 0.3. This is a reduction. So uh, this is getting back Adrisa, to your sign that it is negative. Eh? So it is a reduction. It is the reduction that is increasing. That reduction increased by another, another 0.3%. Already we had a reduction of 0 0.3 before the intervention. But after the intervention, the reduction even increased by another 0 0.3. So what is the new reduction? What is the new slope there for per year in the new period? The new, the, the, what is the slope in after the intervention? What would then be the slope after the intervention? We have seen the change in the slope and it has been even an increase in the downward trend. So what would be the change? What would be the new slope after the intervention, right? What would be the change, the new slope, Nixon, after the intervention? What would be the new slope? Doctor, uh, my phone had blacked out. I didn't know my power was running short. But uh, I missed some parts, but I, I think uh, just by looking at the table of the uh, the, the rate of change in the intervention actually increased, hmm? uh, reduced, reduced by, by 0.6%, which is actually an increase in the reduction rate. 
Okay. So what is the new rate of reduction? The, so it is 0 0.6. Hmm? The new rate of reduction is 0.6 percent per. So you see that it is taking the new trend therefore is beta one plus beta three. So you have your trend beta in pre-intervention and post-intervention. The new trend therefore would be a beta one plus beta three because beta three just represents a change. So if I want to know the new slope in after the intervention, I have to take the the, the 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 trend before the intervention plus the change in the trend hmm? plus the change in the trend to get the new trend hmm? so they see the post trend is about 0 0.3 plus another 0 0.33 and it increases to 0.3 indicating a rapid a much a much more rapid decline hmm? so one would say eh, this intervention has had both a level change effect, a level change effect, which is shown in under beta two, there was a 3.4 percent reduction. Uh -huh. And then there was even a change in the trend, meaning that the, 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 the reduction in by, by, by year increased to by, by zero increased to now 0 0.6 hmm? from 0 0.3 to now 0 0.6 so it increased to that which was an increase of about 0 0.33 percent so that's um, that is the real interpretation eh? that we and we have to know it uh, very very well um, let's move quickly uh, we're out of time uh, I didn't know we would spend much time, but now there's some other thing also. We can also, there could be cities with multiple change points. Hmm? So we have been with one change point, hmm? right? Uh, X, you know, time at some point. But there could even be time series with multiple change points. So you, <clears throat> you may specify more than one change point. Hmm? This may be due to the need maybe to study the effects of different components of an intervention introduced at different time points. Or it may be all the effects of an intervention that was implemented, but later it was withdrawn, right? So you may be interested in the effects of COVID, for instance. You say there was a lockdown, uh-huh, uh, so what was the effect of the lockdown? You can know what the effect of the lockdown was, eh? but then it was lifted after some time. You may still want to know what then happened after it was lifted. So you are looking at multiple change points in, in, in March 2000, lockdown. Then we go to June, oh, the lockdown is lifted. So there is an inf in a three months period where there is probably an effect of the intervention. But also, there could then then it is different. You may want to see all those effects over time. Hmm? So so you may also just do it to control to control for changes in level uh, and slope of the cities that uh, that that are caused that, that are caused you know by by uh, reasons of other policy changes, hmm? and you just want to control for those. Eh? So one thing you should do, realize is that when we run this ITS, let's go to the very simplest example we have been dealing with. When we estimate the, the level effect, mm, beta two, and we expect, we also estimate the slope effect, uh, beta three, we are really controlling for other things. The major thing we control for here is that we do control for the return trend, hmm? which is beta one. You see, we, we're trying to control for the intervention trend. Hmm? We control for the pre-intervention trend so that when we make the conclusion later, then we, we you know, we um, on solid ground, 
we know that the pre-intervention trend was controlled for. We may need to control for changes in slope um, uh, as level and slope of, of a series that uh, cause or reasons for other policies, as I said. So now, if we had a four level change, let me skip this. Hmm? And just, I'm just moving for the example. You see that there was intervention here. Then there was some intervention here. It drag a cup at some point, and the, the effect was on a mini number of prescription patients. So this three drug cap uh, reduced uh, the, the mean number of prescription per patient. Uh, so there was a level effect. Right? If you do this, there will be a level effect. And then <clears throat> the, the, the trend is here. But then after a while, there was some other change. The cap, this drug cap was replaced by another policy uh, of a, a copy of $1. So when once the copy of $1 changed, there was an increase now, hmm? and then the trend went up. Um, so there was a level change again, another level change, and then we we have a, a slope going on, going upwards. So um, if we would go go backwards a bit, that's what we have here. Now the specification of the model changes. Uh, although originally we moved from beta one t, then beta two x, right? This is the, then beta 3x. This is where we stopped at beta 3. Now, what I have done is that I have a subscript on x, uh, the first x to indicate intervention phase one. Hmm? Intervention phase one. That was the first year when there was a first intervention. But then we could have had some other intervention later on, eh? x2. Hmm? So you see now I'm introducing beta 4x2, beta 3x to another interaction term now, x 2 t right? Which is going to come with different in, uh, uh, interpretations, okay? Which will now come with different interpretations. Whereas beta 1 will still remain the slope, really, before any intervention came into effect. It was so it goes to the very first period, the very first period, and then X2 here comes in. You know, we hold everything else um, uh, uh, zero now, and still X uh, b, <coughs> b, b, beta 2 is going to be speaking to the first intervention, right? The first intervention. This is the change in level. Um, uh, with the first intervention, this is was our change in level. And then we moved, and if we go beta 3x1t, meaning we hold all these other things zero, so we are not concerned about these other times. So the change, we, we, change, we see the change in slope after the first intervention still, what was the change in slope? You know, so we, we, we you can see we are holding all these things zero. Hmm. Then we go now to the, now the second intervention comes in, right? Now, which really now starts to speak to the, to the, um, to, to the second intervention, hmm? the level change. So it, it shows us the, 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 the level change. Hmm? It now shows us the what? <clears throat> the, 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 the level change. So you can see that, all the level change, but these are held down to zero. Of course, now you are zero, zero here. You are now really we're going back. What is now that level change for 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 X two? Hmm? What 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 level change uh, did did X two uh, cause hmm? um, uh, compared compared to the uh, first period? What is the, the level change there hmm? compared to 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 to, to uh, the first period, and then what was the change in slope uh, for level for for when inter intervention uh, two was implemented? And let's clearly and we'll see some examples. Okay, <laughs> um, just uh, quickly to mention that we can actually strengthen the 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 the, the impact evaluation through interrupted time series approach eh? by you, you introducing a comparable control series. Eh? 
comparable control series. Because one of the challenges that uh, we get when we do a single ITS, though we are able to control for pre-intervention trends, hmm? we are able to control for pre-intervention trends. We are, we are still uh, we are still uh, um, unable to control for any other possible time co varying covariates. Hmm? We're not very able to control for other time varying covariates. But let me mention that even if we did a single series, if we know these time varying covariates and we have been measuring them over time, we can add them to the model and control for them. Hmm? We can add them to the model and still control for them. But even a much stronger way of controlling for them is the, having a comparative control series where there was no interruption, where there were no interventions. So it's just moving the phase one. So here you have the outcome measured from two sources, which you'd call treatment and control. Uh, and you are uh, and doing this during the same time period. So you are monitoring this series of time during the same time period. So, uh, <clears throat> so you want to answer the question where the level and slope changes are, are different between the, the, the series of the treatment, the treatment and control series. If we compare the treatment and control series, our level and slope changes are different, right? So of course, as I said, it's used less often compared to single series ITS. Eh? Uh, usually the problem is that we, don't, we would really like to do that if we had it, eh? but the times we don't have a control, right? Most of the times we really do not have uh, uh, the control group, eh? uh, the control series, because you see these need to be measured during the same time period for it to make uh, 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 a, real, a real difference uh, for, for us to make a, a proper decision. Most of the times we don't have, because if we introduced, um, uh, if there was say uh, COVID-19 lockdown in Uganda, it just occurred everywhere, right? Just occurred everywhere. So we don't have a series that we can compare with where the lockdown did not occur. Hmm? So maybe uh, if we had, you heard that Tanzania did not have, uh, uh, you know, down effects. If it were possible, and I had the Ugandan data, I could compare the Ugandan data with the Tanzanian data, right? Uh, and, 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 and do a comparison uh, or, or a comparative uh, ITS an analysis. And by the way, that is possible. Even if the data are not so great, eh? Hmm? If you went to the WHO website, there are COVID cases per month. Hmm? I can compare the Ugandan COVID cases, right, with the COVID cases in Tanzania over time. And I can compare the two. Uh, that is a comparative design IT of, of ITS design. So I can actually go compare the two. Hmm? Um, and I look at the cases per month in both countries. Eh? in both countries. And then I, I can get what was the effect of the lockdown in Uganda, right? On a certain outcome of interest. So it is possible, <clears throat> but if I limited myself to Uganda, I may not have a good con comparative co co or control series to compare uh, with. So I, I may be limited to the, uh, to the single uh, ITS. Hmm? Maybe just limited to the single ITS. Okay, so the, that is what it is. Um, it brings in a little bit of complexity in the regression equation, eh? uh, and and you know here you remember we are dealing with only one interruption now, eh? um, but even here you can deal with two interruptions, and you complicate it the more, the more you complicate it, the tougher it becomes to 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 <clears throat> to, to, to interpret. But there you are. You now what you have introduced is the, the variable Z. Hmm? The variable Z now uh, comes in. Um, it is uh, uh -huh. 
this is now is really you know uh, a dummy variable for control and the treatment hmm? which we, which is saying and the treatment series hmm? control series and treatment series and when i say that maybe let me first go to this just to be moved ahead so you can see there are two series here you are you know you can see there are two uh, lines uh, running around eh? so there's a, a, a control series and a, a treatment series there so the z here is treatment and control um and so the the zt here uh the zt here is really looking at uh, the study phase hmm? for, for 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 the treatment and control hmm? and, and so or it is either the, 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 this is going to be one for treatment and 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 um zero uh, for 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 control so this is you being interested in the time in the in the slope eh? you're interested in the slope before hmm? the intervention you was interested in the slope before the intervention comparing comparing the the treatment series with the control series and you go to b b6 here uh where now you are looking at the 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 the, the actual uh treatment the 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 effect of the intervention hmm? the effect of the intervention comparing the, now you're looking at the level effect the, the 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 because now you know you the level effect of the intervention comparing the treatment and the and and the control series right so here we are, you are really looking at the difference in the effect of the intervention remember here you only had beta x right beta x but now beta 6 here is also trying to do the same, but it is looking at the difference in the effect of the intervention, hmm? comparing the treatment and control series. And remember beta seven here is sort of analogous to beta three, hmm? beta three, right? So beta three already looked at the change in, the change in the slope, after the intervention but now uh, the, 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 now we want even to compare that change in slope right we now will compare the change in slope between the the two uh, the, 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 the 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 treatment cities and control cities so so we get to that it gets a little bit more complex, but uh, um, not too much for us to, to interpret. So again, you can say you had this town A, you wanted to co results to, to <clears throat> compare their results to control to uh, other control cities in another town B, uh, which was also uh, estimating the proportion of smoking. And and, and 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 you note that town before it did not implement a smoking tax in 2008. Eh? So it is giving you a control series. And these control series, of course, they're helping you to measure, uh, uh, to also control for other time varying covariates. So then we get our output here uh, from beta one to beta seven. Hmm? From beta one to beta seven. They are all telling us different things, right? We already agreed that beta one hmm, is going is the slope, right? It's going to be our slope uh, pre-intervention, right? Pre-intervention, hmm? pre-intervention. But now the interpretation is a little bit different. Hmm? It's a little bit different. Who can notice the difference now? I think the difference from, is uh, the group. That one uh -huh. should be for the control group. For the control group. Thank you. When you look at this and you you know you put a z to zero, right? Put down z to zero, then you are only dealing with the control group. You just imagine that now z is zero everywhere. So everything beta four to beta seven is reduced to zero. It's not there, right? So beta one becomes 
<clears throat> define the slope, right, for the controls, right? And then the beta two defines what in the same breadth. Beta two would do, then tell us about the level change, right? The level change after the intervention among the controls again, right? Because you're reducing the Z to zero, everything here. Beta three is telling us the change in slope, hmm? the change in slope up to the intervention, but still among the controls, you see, among the controls. Then now we go on and introduce the, 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 the Z's here, and now things start to change, right? Uh, things start to change. When we introduce the Z's here, now we, we have a one and zero. So, you know, um, so here now, beta four becomes what? Four is right there. Mm -hmm. So then beta four becomes what? I yes. think our beta four is, uh, mm. is, the, is, the, is the slope, uh, is, the, is the difference in the slope comparing uh, uh, control and uh, treatment before the intervention. Ah, wonderful, sir. Mm -hmm. You made a real good point. Eh? It's a, that it's talking about we're looking at the difference in, 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 you know, in their slopes before the intervention. So before the intervention where the slopes different, hmm? before the intervention where the slopes different, that's beta four. Now we go to beta five. What does it say? Mm -hmm. Someone just say it. Beta five, what, what, what? Could it, could it be the difference in slope mm -hmm. um, before the intervention comparing the control and the treatment? Sorry? I'm trying to... So, oh, sorry, let's go back to beta four again. I think we added here in beta four. Uh, did, is it Roger who said it? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so sorry, sorry. Let, let's get uh, back to you a little bit. I, I think, I think this is the slope. Mm -hmm. Our beta four could be the, the slope uh, over, this is the slope uh, between uh, control and intervention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, between control and treatment. Mm -hmm. uh, sh that should be before, before, before the, the, the intervention. Okay. Okay. So this is a, a, a pre-intervention, a pre-intervention level difference. Mm -hmm. This is just a pre-intervention level difference. So what we're talking about uh, is, is the beta five Z, uh, ZT here. The, the, the beta five ZT, I think that's what you are talking uh, about before. And then we had the beta six uh, Z6 and then the interaction between the, the, the two, right? Mm. Because here you see, we did not have time in here. So we are really looking at uh, pre-intervention pre level differences, pre-intervention level difference, uh, comparing control to intervention. So whereas, you know, so we, we, we had alpha, uh, alpha, which is, was only in the control, but be after the intervention, uh, when we compare the groups, there, is, there could also be a pre a pre-level difference eh, between the intervention and control. Then beta five, we now get into the, the, the slope. When we introduce T, we get into the slope. Eh? Uh, so we sort of are going to beta one here, but we want the difference in slope. Hmm? We want to see the, 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 the difference in slope, but before the intervention, right? Before the intervention, and beta six, we get to the, the difference in, in, in levels. Now, after the intervention, 
there was a which is bitter to uh, the changes in levels but uh, the, we saw the change in levels after the intervention in the control group but now beta 6 wants to look at what is that what is the difference in level level change hmm, after the intervention comparing the, the the intervention to the control group and again beta 7 once is like beta 3 right is like beta 3 but it is looking at the the difference hmm, in the change in slope comparing the intervention to the control. So a change in slope difference, it is a change in slope difference between the treatment and the control, right? So, so here you can actually see the results, right? The one is right here. So <clears throat> as we said, it is a trend, but it is for the control group right it's only for the control group remember the other time we had i think 2.7 hmm? so it is control group it has 2.2 about almost the same 0.3 per year hmm? beta 2 is that the level change hmm? but only for the control group so there was a reduction of 5 about 6% and then beta 3 gets into uh, the, the, the again the control, but in this, it's in that change in slope. What is the change in slope, hmm? right? Change in slope after the intervention for the control again, eh? for the control. Hmm? Limit yourself to the control group, control group, and then beta now comes us to introduce us to differences between treatment and control series. Eh? And it will show that before the intervention, there were even uh, just there were level changes before, uh, um, uh, 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 before the intervention. And those changes was that the, actually the treatment group had higher uh, smoking than <clears throat> the, the whatever before the intervention of 0 0.4. And you can see these changes here. The differences you can see them there. Beta five then gets into looking at the slope. Hmm? The 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 it looks at uh, um, the the <clears throat> the what? If we can go back, people see beta five here. It starts to look at the trend, right? What was the trend? But what is the difference in the trend? But before the intervention. Eh? So here we are, treatment control pre-level difference in, 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 in sorry, we have beta five, pre-trend difference. So before the intervention, what was the differences in slope? And then beta six uh, gets into the levels. The levels changed after the intervention, but how was that difference different comparing the control and, and, and intervention? So we get it here. Right, then beta seven now goes to the change in slope, the change in slope after the intervention. How does it compare for the treatment and the control? So it is telling us that the 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 the, in, the, the treatment series, right? The treatment series even noticed, uh, noticed, uh, and even the treatment series noticed an even much lower reduction rate, right? Um, a much lower reduction rate. It's showing that, though we saw the other ones saying that there was a, a 0 0.3 percent, uh, a 0 0.3 percent increase in the reduction of this uh, reduction. But this is even saying, when you compare with the treatment, that change in the, in the treatment, in the reduction was even much higher, hmm? was even much, much higher uh, um, at this rate. So the interesting thing that you could actually <clears throat> um, torture yourselves with 
is, is, is looking, so you can see change in slope difference. Change in slope difference is 0 0.69. The level difference is, 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 is 2.88, uh, which is here, beta 6. Eh? Hmm? The level difference. Now you can actually touch yourself with something. You, you can say, can I really now determine the actual trend, right? Can I determine the actual trend in the in the intervention group, which is now the solid one here? Can I determine that, right? That will be a very interesting exercise for you. And it employs the same principles we've, we've had. So then, of course, you will get into issues of autocorrelation, which we have mentioned, that uh, points <clears throat> in, the, in the, uh, the different measures at different time points uh, might be autocorrelated. And you, 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 you'd have to choose which measurements you are interested in, in adjusting for autocorrelation. <clears throat> so you may find that you're interested in lag, lag one, meaning these were the measurements done in the immediate, in, 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 in the period that is just one point away from the pre this present time, which is a first order called autocorrelation. You test for first order, Auto correlation, or maybe two lags, which will be second order correlation. Or you may say 12 months ago, which may be like now 12 order, they were all 24 months ago, depending on really what make, makes sense. Eh? And you, in your classes in the LDA, you have learned to, to test for, uh, to, to to obtain residuals eh? after your regression and, uh, and do a identify residual autocorrelation. And you have also learned how to add, uh, identify the optimal lag, the optimal lag order. Is it lag one, lag two, lag three? Hmm? So which is what you have been doing? I don't, I, want, I don't want to belabor that too much. What I wanted to do is, uh, is just to show you that you can adjust for that autocorrelation. Eh? Um, and uh, the new West, new West, uh, in new West has very good autocorrelation. Can help you know methods to adjust for autocorrelation, or, or uh, um, um, uh, so that you have the standard errors which you obtain um, uh, uh, adjusted for autocorrelation. And I wanted to show you something here. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to show something brief here because I see the time is up. Uh, so if you you will allow, I will just unshare and uh, get back to this do file eh? and uh, look at um, um, these. These are panel data actually, looking at uh, carbon dioxide exposure, right? Uh, carbon dioxide exposure. Exposure, right? Um, the, the, the parts per million, I think, that's how it is captured. It's in parts per million. So, so this data set uh, has uh, those data, right? Um, of, you know, carbon dioxide exposure. Um, so, you, you, you can, if I, I did just browse uh, in their computer, I will not do what. Uh, even he told me last time. Hmm? Um, I hope that everyone. So this is from 1959, uh, going down, right? Um, and, and they are showing you carbon monoxide, carbon monoxide, um, rates parts in parts per million, in parts per million. So you have it there, right? And the interest. I think a policy in 2000, I think it was in 2004, um, something happened in 2004, and I don't remember what it was. I, I, I have to, to, to read this again. But some, some, some policy or something else was introduced. So when we look at this data, we want to look at the series uh, of carbon monoxide series over time. So what we really do, um, um, first is we want to uh, identify the 
here. The time variable here is the time, is the year. So we first declare this data. We have to declare them panel data. We like what you've done in your LDA. We'll say, we'll TS set. In this data, we'll say TS set so that we uh, this data are now declared as panel, as panel data. And, uh, and if you go in here, you will see after running TS set, this data now declared as a panel. Hmm? Panel data and the time unit has been identified running from 1959 to 2017. Eh? And uh, the change is, is a unit change 111 eh? is, is how it is being captured. Eh? Um, so, 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 so really when we do that, um, we have declared it, you can have a chance to just look at the, the uh, graph, graph, graph that and look at what it looks like, uh, what those cities look like um, over time, um, and uh, and uh, and and when I when I just graph them, hmm? when I just graph them, it kind of looks like that. Eh? It looks like who carbon monoxide actually uh, has just kept increasing over time. And so we may just say, this is the uh, linear trend. We can just say, ah, oh, we can do a baseline of fit. But if you see, the, you can see that the increase tends to, 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 to the, the slope tends to increase over time, eh? over time. So here you could, if you draw a line of best fit, it could go down here. It could just go like down here. And then there is another sort of slope at this time. And then the another one seems to be even steeper after some time. Eh? It even seems steeper after uh, some time. So you could actually do a number of things. Eh? You could do a number of things here. Um, <clears throat> you know, I had some code here just for purposes of getting people to do it from first principles. Eh? Um, if I were interested in period, if, uh, the, the, this uh, if, uh, shift in carbon dioxide emissions was thought to have occurred around 2004 due to some intervention. Hmm? Hmm? Uh, due to some intervention. Okay, so we so say maybe that occurred around 2004. So we were talking about generating indicator variables. Eh? Um, so one would indicate, say, let me create an indicator variable for that period. Hmm? Uh, that is our X now. So we could say uh, period 2004 going forward is our, is the intervention period. And then the, the, the period before that then becomes the, um, then becomes uh, the, 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 the period pre intervention. And then we can say, let's generate this time variable. This time variable is the time starting uh, at 59, not at 58. Uh, so year minus 1958. This is going to create a time variable running from zero to going, going onwards. Um, and then we can even generate time variable for time after 2004. So we say, eh, after 2004, uh, let's have a time variable for time after 2004. And we can say time after 2004 is here minus this. And we'll replace uh, that with zero if time, if the time variable time is actually less than uh, 2004. So, so then we, we, we if the time is less than 2004, that is zero, zero, zero. But after 2004, it starts to take on values. And so if we just run a simple regression, regress carbon dioxide and time years, period and time after 2004, we can just simply um, get a, a quick regression that could tell us what the, the effects are over time. Eh? Um, what the effects are uh, over time. Um, um, okay. 
so it will just tell us what the effects are over time but this is just doing it the naive sense where we are just ignoring the autocorrelation everything is ignored ignore the autocorrelation as when we run it we can interpret by looking at we have it says from the the, the slope was 300 the the the, the baseline carbon monoxide was 310 as you can see here the, it was 310 and then time years is what is giving us the time the slope hmm? it gives us the slope so we can see that the slope but this is before the intervention now time uh, one point uh, slope was about 1.3 before the intervention and then we get the x the period effect was there a level change we can see a level change of about 3.1 uh, parts per million eh? and this is all statistically significant and now this would represent our interaction term hmm? time after 2004 right how did the slope change after 2004 so this would just tell us that the slope actually increased by 0.84 so if you wanted to get to the new slope, it would be this slope plus the slope before the intervention. So the beta one plus beta three, right? So we could do that. However, another good way to do this that caters for autocorrelation uh, so that we, we appear to be, uh, to, to know a bit about autocorrelation is using the ITSA. Hmm? is using ITSA, the ITSA interrupted time series analysis uh, command here, where we can say, let's get the ITSA for carbon monoxide poisoning. We say that we, this is a single, we specify that this is a single ITSA and the time period which represents where the intervention uh, started is going to 2004. At that time point 2004, is where the intervention starts. Eh? We have put in something called lag one, showing that our autocorrelation is, 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 is at lag one. So we are going to do uh, control for correlation for lag one, meaning if, so if I'm looking at 2004, I'm controlling for 2003 level, levels. I'm assuming that the measurement at 2004 is highly correlated with the measurement at 2003, right? Uh, 2003. So I control for that and also uh, produce a, a figure that, uh, that we, we, with the post trend line. Um, so, so when I do that, uh, when I do that, I can actually plot out that figure, hmm? which is uh, for it, uh, the, the ITSA automatically generates those things which we were trying to generate ourselves manually, generate this, generate that, replace that. It has already done them for us and we are going to go back and look at them. Eh? So you see, it shows here a pre-trend slope. You can see that the pre-trend slope seems a bit different. Eh? And you can see that there is a possibility of a sharing, level change. Doctor. Doctor, you're not displaying. Not sharing. I'm not. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry, guys. So you can see here, um, it gives the, the ITSA. It, it's very good and I encourage it. Eh? So it already gives you this dotted line, which represents 2004. Right. This is where the changes happened, and uh, it, it it fits a baseline of fit here to give you the slope. The, before the intervention, it shows the slope. You can actually see that from this time going to 2004, there there have, seems to have been a small jump, right? A small jump here. So you could think there's a level change here, right? Uh, based on this model, there's a level change. And after that, uh, we don't know whether it is going to be the same slope also, or also the slope changed. It's possible that slope changed because you 
t here and then you see t here, it's, it might be different also. The slope might also be different. So before I actually go, let me just get back and, and so that we see how ITSA automatically creates those new variables, right? That we are trying to create by hand. So these are the new variables that it creates. Um, I don't know if you can see, am I sharing or not? I don't know. Hmm. Oh, I'm not. So, okay. It's just because I'm moving from one screen to another. Um, but you can see when we run the ITSA, it actually creates this. Hmm? Right? You remember us struggling to create a, a variable for time year, time starting from 59 to what? But when we run ITSA, it creates it automatically. So we have a time variable already. In fact, why don't I show what we tried to create ourselves so that you can see uh, what it does. So it, it, it really heavily, heavily, heavily lifts most of this. So we created time here, time what? Um, uh -huh. Uh -huh. So if we went back and I can browse this, uh, stop sharing. Am I sharing what I should be sharing or not? Okay. So you see, you see, we created uh, the, this variable time years, eh? zero, one to go, uh, but it is it creates this automatically as the underscore T. It is there, right? We created the period 2004 the X variable, hmm? the X variable, right? It creates it automatically. It is the underscore X 2004. It also creates it. So it is a zero, zero, zero up to some point. Then after some point, it becomes one. Eh? You see after some point, it is one, 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 one eh? uh, going down. Eh? And uh, so so we are good. Eh? Um, okay. Uh, uh, the, then we are good. It is one that uh, I do not see that we created. Yeah, and we you see that we created the 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 variable for time after two thousand four, time after two thousand four, so that the rest is zero, right? Anything below that, because that will help us with that interaction term. So we created it manually here. But here it creates it automatically. Hmm? And you will see that these two are really the same. If you go down eh? and right here, they start. Hmm? You see one, one. Uh, so that is the interaction term. It's uh, because it's talking ab about time after 2004 so that it can estimate the trend after 2004. So, so you can see it's a beautiful, very beautiful command hmm? uh, to run. The important thing is that you can interpret <clears throat> what what you see. Um, that is the that's the most important. So if I if I again <clears throat> moved away from that and uh, went back to this, so we have run the ITSA. Hmm? Now, if because we have run the ITSA, we need to go back and interpret it. You see, it has these variables. Hmm? It has all these variables, okay, which we actually saw when we did something manual, huh? a bit manual here. We saw uh, a, a slope of 1.37. Here it does it still, and it comes to 1.36, right? We saw the effect of X, a level change of 3.13. It shows a level change of 3.7, close, close. Then our change in slope was 0 0.8, showing that the slope actually increased after 2004. The slope increased after 2004. So, you know, here we got 0 0.841. Eh? So we are really close in to this, but the thing what that is doing is for it, it is controlling for autocorrelation using lag one, if you see maximum lag one. So, so lag one is what go, is going for. Hmm? So uh, the addition it gives us is uh, this uh, treated, hmm? where it automatically, have you done a Lincoln, Lincoln, Lincoln command in Stata? Not really. 
Oh, no, you have. Uh, definitely, you have in the multiple linear regression. Hmm? So, if we wanted to know the beta one plus beta two, uh, something like that. Hmm? Uh, so it actually goes and 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 it does uh, um, um, sort of uh, gives us the 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 the, the post intervention. Eh? linear trend. So it says what will the post intervention linear trend be by taking beta one plus beta two. In other words, it's taking beta one, which is here, 1.36 plus beta three, the 0.84, which we said that if I wanted to know the trend post, post intervention, then it is given by beta one plus beta three, and it is right here. Now in this model, if you had um, any other variables uh, that have changed over time that you wish to control for, you have a chance to control for those variables uh, in here, right? You have a, you can actually put them in this model. Here we haven't put any variables. However, we are controlling for the pre-intervention trends. Hmm? We are controlling for the pre-intervention trends. So one would also say, how about multiple points? Could we, what if we just said that there may be the points might be different at different time points. Eh? Well, then we can run the same, uh, are you seeing the do file? I don't know what I'm sharing. Yes. Are, so we, we can uh, run, we can run it, but this time specify that in, in 1990, we expect the trends could be different in 1990, uh, and they may even be different from 2004. So you can actually go and 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 try to look at uh, that and uh, and produce a new trend uh, and look at it. Eh? Um, see if it will be any different. I think I have to stop sharing, and then um, um, share this. Eh? So when I share this, you can see between 1958 to 1990, ah, this estimates some trend here, which might be a bit different, might be different. But when you go to 2000, 1990 to 2004, it also seems a bit different, right? Right? Seems a bit different. Now 2004 going forward, is that different? I don't know, looks similar, but Certainly the, the one before 1990 looks a bit lower than the one after 2004. Hmm? So you may actually, you can imagine that these time points represent, as we said, different, uh, so I was talking about a lockdown. So lockdown happened here in 1990 and there's something you want to observe. Eh? Uh, but now it is lifted in 2004, and you still want to observe uh, the trends. Eh? So you can still run that, and uh, it is uh, uh, going to, uh, to give you some output for you to, to, to interpret. Eh? Um, just as we saw, <coughs> um, um, uh, as we saw before, eh? um, and it will tell you, you know, what the trends are. And ITSA is very kind because you know, see, it is generating all these. Let me go. I'm not sharing, I think. Uh, so it has now generated all these dummy variables for you. Hmm? It has time, right? The, which is the slope. Hmm? The slope. Okay. It gives you the slope here and it gives you the treatment variable. Uh, the, you know, but at 1990, 1990, then now it gives you the change in slope eh? when we change from 1990 to 2004 in that phase, eh? it gives us, eh? but even it shows us the level effect for 2004, the change after 2004, and then the, the change in slope after 2004. So you see XT1990 and XT2004 are, are, are really trying are changes in slope and the X1990 and X2004 are changes in, in a, in a, in a, in a, in, so it does the Lincoln for you. Hmm? 
it does the link home for you uh, here. Uh, it, it, you know, you have the beta one plus uh, the XT 1990, right? So showing you the new trend, the new trend, the new trend, hmm? showing you the, the new trend in the period after 1990. So then the 1990 to 2004 trend is this one, which is my beta plus uh the the, the 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 that one that comes from the interaction term which is this one and that right so it adds them together and it gives you the new trend in 2000 after the change from 1999 to 2004 but th then it even gives you the new slope after 2004 which is, uh, you see, beta one plus this plus that. So it's adding three things here to finally give you the slope after 2003. So it takes that, uh, then adds that, and even adds that. Then you have the new trend uh, for 2004. Because this is looking at, the 2000 the, 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 uh, before 2004 between 1990 and 2004 to the trend after and then the 1991 here is looking at what's the trend after 1990 to 2004 compared to before right so so these are very interesting um, um things to look at and interpretations uh, to make uh, with the ITS and I'm over the over time uh, getting into people's lunch. So um, so I could send you this do file and the data set and you really run it and interpret it along with the, the notes for today. Um, ITS um, was really um, is uh, uh, the, 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 the is is not necessarily only going like what you've done for individual, but it's extremely important uh, for you to to know it. You're going to face it in your in your usual life. You may actually face it much more than individual level data. Hmm? You may face it much more than individual level data because there are lots of data available <coughs> that are free. Uh, for instance, if you went into the DHIS2, uh, there's all measurements over time. So if there was a policy change somewhere, you would be, if you knew ITS, you would really be up to speed. This is something that would be great. I mean, runs for your thesis, for your what, because uh, the data are available. And so you would do your thesis very, very quickly and, and get out. Hmm? And you would give uh, lots of great information for policy, for policy, because you are going to be using data that is already in the public domain, which is of interest to the government. So I see if you did a good job on anything, you would have a very quick abstract or your national conference or whatever, and you make a big name for yourself. So I'm going to stop here. I'm too much over time. Um, and. Um, you know, and, and let you off for your celebrations of Women's Day. I haven't had mine yet also, so don't, don't you are not alone. Yes, Doctor, thank you so much for your time and for everything. Uh, we would also appreciate that if you share with us the materials and also people are also requesting for the two files that we used during PCX lecture. The what, the what? The two files that we used during uh, principal component analysis lecture, uh, we also request that you share it with us. Hello. Doctor. <laughs> 